Memorial Health System provides compassionate, patient-centered care with some of the most advanced technology and treatment options available in healthcare today. We proudly present Memorial Health Radio. Here's Melanie Cole. You know, our feet can handle a lot of stress, but if you put too much of a load on them, it can, over time, cause damage. When heel pain begins to limit your daily activities, it might be time to see a podiatrist to assess your issue. My guest today is Dr. Ian Avetua. He's a podiatrist with Memorial Health System. Dr. Avetua, what are some of the most common causes of heel pain that you see every day? Some of the most common uh, heel pain patients that come into our office usually have plantar fasciitis, probably number one. Uh, and then another one that's pretty common that can be assessed is tarsal tunnel syndrome or nerve impingement. Um, and then even a, a bursitis that could be causing some pain for a lot of patients. Dr. Avi Tua, before we talk about diagnosis of some of these issues, please answer this common question that listeners might have Why would they go see a podiatrist or why would they go see an orthopedic surgeon when they have foot problems? Please explain why what you do as a specialist in the feet is the reason to see a podiatrist. Yeah, so both podiatrists and orthopedists do a lot of the same work. Um, Orthopedists, depending on what their specialty is, uh, will, will range do special fellowship training or surgery for the whole body. And sometimes they may do a lot of cases in the foot or ankle, and sometimes they may not. They may just know the body in general. With a podiatrist, uh, the first two years of, of medical school or the podiatry school are, are with a lot of are the same class as medical school, and then the last two years kind of start to focus in and hone in on the foot and ankle. Um, and then from there, in residency, uh, not only are podiatrists rotating through internal medicine, emergency medicine, anesthesiology, um, general surgery, vascular surgery, orthopedic surgery. But we also spend a great majority of our time doing foot and ankle surgery. And so we're learning techniques. We're learning about uh, different symptoms, uh, seeing patients with these things. And so it's just a lot more training within the scope of, of what we're practicing. And um, that's not to say that orthopedists don't know a lot about the foot or ankle. I'm just saying podiatrists are well-trained nowadays with the residency programs that they have and everything to know and be able to treat and diagnose people with foot pain and ankle pain um, with, with today's patient population. Thank you for that answer. It definitely clears up some of the confusion about your specialty. So how do you diagnose what the issue is? If someone comes in and say, uh, you know, I, I have trouble in the morning, I hobble around, my heels are burning, or what do you do to diagnose a heel issue? Well, first thing is a history, getting a history from the patient. When they say, when they come in and you say, oh, describing pain first thing in the morning with that first step, and then after walking around a while, it starts to feel a little better, that kind of clues us into maybe what might be happening with the patient. They also describe it as also lasting after they get up after periods of rest and are having um, pain again, but it goes away after walking for a while then that kind of leads us more to think plantar fasciitis. Um, and and then there's other things as well that, that uh, can either hone us in on what we think it may be or not. Um, and then a physical. So the history and physical are really key in making the diagnosis for what may be going on with a, with a patient and their heel pain. Um, but just finding uh, the history, like I said, the history and physical are, are really key into getting that and then at just asking them, you know, has there been any change in their weight? Uh, has there been a change in their job? Um, and those sort of things, whether it's one foot or both feet, and then what kind of shoes they're wearing. Shoes are so important, aren't they? And people don't really realize when they're exercising and the stress that we put, as I said in my intro, doctor, about the stress that we put on our feet. Tell us when somebody does suffer from plantar fasciitis or heel spurs or any of these other issues we're talking about today, what do you recommend as far as shoes? You know, a good supportive sneaker goes a long way, something that's going to support the arch because with plantar fasciitis in general, uh, when you're taking that step, that plantar fascia is stretching out. And so it's tugging on your heel bone. And so when someone says, oh, I have a heel spur, they may think the spur 
is what's causing the pain. And really, the heel spur is not causing your pain. That just means you have really tight ligaments and, and plantar fascia on the bottom that's been tugging at your bone for so long that it has caused the spur to develop. But it's that tugging of the plantar fascia with each step when you're barefoot that it's just causing that pain to develop. So if you can kind of give your body a period of rest where you're wearing a good supportive shoe like a sneaker, um, just, you know, a Asics, a New Balance, um, some sort of running shoe that's got the good supportive arch support, then that's not going to have your arch stretch as much, which will decrease some of your pain. Um, there's also some decent over-the-counter orthotics that can help or insoles, um, but really custom orthotics can help a lot of people uh, relieve some of their pain as well. Well, I mean, so what is the intention of an orthotic? It it provides support under the arch and then takes off some of that pressure on that heel? Well, it's not only uh, the arch support, but it's keeping your foot in a proper position to where it's not going to have as much pain. Whereas if your foot's rolling in or rolling out, and that may lead to um, other parts of your feet not working properly. The arch or the orthotic is really just to kind of help support the heel and and the arch in the proper position. Doctor, what are some at-home treatments, things that people can do at home to help if they suffer from plantar fasciitis? So some things that they can try at home before seeing is stretching, doing a wall stretch, just really stretching your calf. And it may seem counterintuitive. My, the bottom of my foot hurts, not the back, but you want to stretch out your calf because sometimes a really tight calf can cause that plantar fasciitis. So doing a wall stretch holding it for 10 seconds. And I tell my patients, do that 10 times a day. I don't want you to do it for 100 seconds, right? First in the morning, but I want 10 seconds, just 10 times throughout the day. So you're constantly stretching it and kind of getting that going. Another thing you can do, try doing, is taking a water bottle, putting it in the freezer, and then letting it become ice. And then at night, you're rolling your foot over that bottle, massaging that area. You can also try a golf ball, put in the freezer, so your ice, that may help and that might help feel good. Just getting some ice on them can can do a lot for some of the inflammation. You could also try doing a towel or a belt and just sitting down, laying down with your knee extended and have that belt or that towel over the ball of your foot and just pulling it back to kind of stretch it out as well. Um, but stretching is, is really key. And even trying like uh, if you're, you know, your medical history is okay and you've, you've had... Uh, anti-inflammatories before you could try either Tylenol, but more importantly, I'd like uh, ibuprofen uh, or naproxen, naproxen over the counter, and just taking that for three, four days, seeing if that can help reduce it. So then people have heard about Achilles tendonitis as well. So they hear about all of these issues, doctor, and it could be any one of them. So tell us about Achilles tendonitis and what causes it. What's the most common cause? Achilles tendonitis is so the Achilles is on the back of the of, of the heel. Um, it can bother a lot of people. Uh, basically, it's painful inflammation on the uh, the distal part, or I guess the part closest to the the heel bone. Uh, it can be associated with an area where there's not a great blood supply. It's called the watershed area. Um, also, this sometimes can be associated with calcification at that level of the uh, insertion meaning there's just not enough or it's just kind of dried out over time, the tendon. And that can just tug, again, like the plantar fascia, it's tugging on the heel bone. And it, if it's tugging where it inserts, that's actually called enthesiopathy or enthesiitis, uh, which uh, can just be tugging on that heel bone. Uh, if it's up above, you can have like micro tears of the tendon. That's just due to repetitive trauma. Um, and so a lot of times with this, it's this incident, it's, uh, young athletes or, uh, people that have had problems with their tendon in the past, they may not have torn it completely, but they have like a partial tear and those partial tears can, can add up and become painful for patients later on. Sometimes, you know, the history that a patient may describe is it's kind of slow onset chronic heel pain with some swelling. Uh, sometimes it can even be aggravated by shoes or um, or it's relieved when they're walking either barefoot in some cases or if they're wearing a heel. Uh, 
an elevated tail, which may seem kind of counter- counterintuitive. How could someone feel better wearing a, something, a shoe with a heel or a high heel? But that might be if they have a tight Achilles or if they've had so much when you're wearing a heel, you're not putting as much tension on your Achilles. That's so interesting. What a great explanation. And when does heel pain or foot problems, when do you discuss the word surgery with patients? When does it come down to that? So me personally, I like to go a little more conservative first before jumping into surgery, depending on what it is. Um, and I think, I don't know if this is the general consensus across the board, but I would just encourage every patient to kind of uh, assess the risks and benefits, which I think most doctors would, would discuss risks and benefits of, of different treatment options for patients. For me, I want to see I, I'd like an x-ray just to make sure there's no fracture, make sure there's no stress fracture, anything going on. Uh, and then uh, doing a treatment such as an anti-inflammatory medication or even a low-dose steroid for a few days to see if that can kind of get rid of some of this inflammation that's going on. Uh, sometimes doing an injection, a steroid injection with local anesthetic, that'll numb up the area right away and hopefully get rid of the inflammation. And that may be all that a patient needs. But um, in certain cases, when they don't get better with uh, conservative treatment, you know, medication, uh, steroid injections, or or resting it, putting them maybe in like a uh, a CAM boot, which is a controlled ankle motion boot. That's what CAM stands for. Uh, that's where they may benefit from having surgery to uh, to release the plantar fascia. Um, or in a in the case of Achilles tendonitis, if they're in that boot and they're resting and they're not getting better, they may have a partial tear, which could benefit from doing surgery. And so for my approach, like I said, I like to try a little more conservative stuff first. And that way, I think the patient feels a little more comfortable. We've exhausted our, our conservative options, and now we can move on to doing something that uh, may, may be beneficial and, and beneficial for the patient in the long run as well. Dr. Avitua, wrap it up for us with your best advice as a podiatrist of what you want people to know about keeping healthy feet and when you feel it's important that they come to see you if they're suffering from some problems that really limit their daily activities. So I think, you know, if you're having feet pain and it's been going on for even a couple of weeks, I would say go see, go see a doctor and just go see a podiatrist and find out what's going on. It may be um, something simple or maybe more complex. Uh, you know, there's different things that can cause heel pain. It's not always going to be plantar fasciitis. It's not always going to be Achilles tendonitis. There could be, um, like I said, the nerve could be bothered and that could be a tarsal tunnel syndrome or it could be, you know, something from not wearing proper shoes. And so um, just coming to visit and seeing, uh, seeing me or seeing, you know, a podiatrist in general what it will do is it will really just kind of make sure we nip the problem in the bud sooner rather than waiting and drying this out for months and months. I have a friend that um, lives in a, uh, across the country, and he's telling me he's been having feet pain for over a year, and he was telling me in this history and how it's been hurting him first thing in the morning. And then, you know, he I knew what he had right away, but he didn't, and he's just like, oh, it's kind of been bothering me. So if he had gone to see someone where he lived, when it after a month after, I mean, he could have had this healed, but I talked to him, told him some things that he could do, uh, and then and then was able to help him. And now he's, and this was just over this past weekend, now he's feeling a lot better and he's back to his daily, normal daily activities. But to have it carry on and drag out for so long can be a real hindrance and, and painful for people that may not be necessary. It's great information, Doctor. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise on heel pain. There's so many foot topics we could talk about. So thank you so much for being with us. You're listening to Memorial Health Radio with Memorial Health System. For more information, please visit mhsystem.org. That's mhsystem.org. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for listening.